In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to bake emission maps. And for demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using my procedural sci-fi metal material, and I have a tutorial on how to create this material, so if you'd like to check that out, I'll have the link in the description. And you can also purchase the procedural sci-fi metal on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, I'll have the links in the description to that as well. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships are all great ways to help support me and this channel. And also, if you're completely new to texture baking in Blender, then you might be interested in checking out my texture baking for beginners tutorial, where I show you the baking process and how to bake all of the common texture maps. Now, there's two different common ways that you may have set up your emission material. So the first way to set it up is to plug your nodes into the emission of the principal shader, and then you can turn the emission strength up to make the strength of the emission. But the other way to set up your nodes is to use the emission shader, and then you can make the emission color right here or you can plug up a texture map to the color if you want there to actually be a texture instead of a single color and then you can change the strength here so in this setup I have the principled shader and this is being used to create the procedural metal material then I have the emission and then I am mixing both of these shaders together with a mix shader and then to tell the material where it's going to be the emission and where it's going to be the principled shader I am using this color ramp here and this color ramp is going into the factor so whether you're using the first method or the second method to set up your emission shader Shader, the baking process is basically exactly the same, but I will go over how to bake both of these setups in this video. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is create an image to bake to. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for an image texture, and we're just going to drop the image texture right here. And then let's click on the new button to create a new image texture. And then on the name here, I can just call this emit. You can really rename this to whatever you want, but I would recommend writing emit or emission at the end of the name. And then you can change the resolution of your texture right here. So on default, it is a 1K texture. I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go. And I can change both values at the same time. And I'm going to type in 4096. So this is the standard resolution for a 4K texture. And then I can just leave the color at black and I will just click on OK. So this is the image that we are going to bake to. So the next thing that we need to do is UV unwrap our object. So you could go right up here to the UV editing tab, but I'm instead just going to click right here when the crosshair appears and drag down, and this is going to split the window. And then if I scroll right over here, I can click right here to change the editor type, and I'm going to change this to the UV editor. And then I want to load up this image, so if I click here on the drop down, I can add the emit. So this is the image that we're going to bake to. Now if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, I can press the A key to select all the vertices. Now if you already have a nice UV unwrap, you can just leave that how it is, but I'm just going to do a quick and easy UV unwrap that'll work fine for texture baking. So I'm going to press the U button, and then I'm going to click on the smart UV project. And then I do want a little bit of space between the islands, so I'm going to turn the island margin to a 0.002 and then I can just click on OK. So now if I zoom in here, you can see that there is a tiny little space between those islands, and I definitely want that, because if there is any overlapping of the UVs, then that's gonna mess up the texture. And then just to confirm that there's nothing overlapping, I can click on Select, and then I can click on Select Overlap, and you can see nothing has been selected. So there's nothing overlapping. And if you'd like to learn all about the basics of UV unwrapping, then you can check out my UV unwrapping for beginners tutorial. I'll have a link to that in the description. But this UV unwrap will work great for the texture baking. The main things that you want to check for is that there isn't any overlapping of the different UV islands, and then you also want to make sure that the UV editing isn't going outside of the boundary of the texture. So I can press the tab key to go back to object mode. All right, so we can now go over the bake settings. So I'm just going to make this bigger, and I'm going to go right up here to the render properties. Now to bake the textures, you are gonna to need to use the Cycles rendering engine because the EV rendering engine doesn't support baking. So if you are using EV, that's totally fine. You just need to change this over to Cycles, then you can bake the textures, and then once the texture baking is finished, you can change this back to EV. Now right here on the device here, you can use whichever graphics card you would normally use to render out images. So I use my GPU because I have a GPU in my computer and it 
renders a lot faster than my CPU. So you can bake with both CPU or GPU. I'm going to use GPU because my GPU is faster. And then also if you open up the sampling tab right here, if you turn the render samples down, then it's going to bake faster. So you can actually just turn the samples all the way down to one, and that's not going to affect the quality of the bake. All right, so I'm going to minimize the sampling tab, and if the render engine is set to cycles, then there's going to be a bake tab right here. So I'm actually going to click right here on the dots, and I'm going to drag this up and put it right here on the top just so that it is on the top of the stack. And then I can click on the arrow to open it up. So right here we have all the bake settings. Now we want to bake the emission. So on the bake type right here, I can just click on this and I can change this to emit. Emit is short for emission. So because we've set this to emission, it's going to bake whatever values is going into the emission right here. Now when you are baking other texture maps like roughness maps and metallic maps and also normal maps, you would normally want to set the color space to a non-color here on the image texture. And that is because the metallic and the roughness in the normal, all of those maps aren't contributing to the base color of the material. But then if you're baking the color map, the color map is going into the base color, so it is contributing to the base color of the material. So if you're baking the color map, you would leave this at sRGB. In this case, we want to leave the emission color space at sRGB. And this is because the emission is actually a color value. You can see it is a yellow dot, where all of these here are just gray dots. But then the base color is a yellow dot as well. So because the emission is using color data, we do want to leave the color space here set to sRGB. RGB. Now one really important thing before you bake this, you need to make sure the emission strength is turned to 1, because if the emission strength is turned up higher than 1 or lower than 1, then the actual color value isn't going to be correct and then it's not going to bake properly. If I turn the emission strength way up, it's going to be very very bright, and so instead of the final baking looking like this slight yellow color, it's actually just going to look fully white, because it is blown out and it is too bright. So I had this set to 5. But before I bake this, I need to turn the emission strength back to 1. So before you hit the bake button, you want to make sure that the object is selected, and then you also want to make sure that the image texture is selected, and that way Blender will know what image it needs to bake to. And then we have the bake type set to emit, and then before I bake, I always just press Control S to save the Blender file, and then we can click on the bake button. And there we go, so it is finished. So we can now just save this to our computer, because if you don't save this image to your computer, then Blender's not going to save the data, and so you will actually lose the image texture. So so to save this as an image file on your computer, you can click on image and then you can click on save as. And I'm just going to save this in a folder with my other files and I'm going to rename it to emit. And then right over here on the file format, you could use PNG if you want to, but I'm going to change this to JPEG and that'll just compress the file size just a little bit so the file size will be smaller. And then I'll just set the quality to 100. And then you can click on save as image. Alright, so that is how you bake the emission map. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and bake the color map and the normal map and all the other maps, but I'm not going to go over that in this video. But if you'd like to learn how to bake all the other maps, then you can check out my texture baking for beginners tutorial. Link is in the description to that. So these are the procedural nodes, but because I've baked the emission map, I don't need to use these anymore. So I can just like delete this and then I can replace this for our texture. And I'm just going to bring these up here and I can now plug the emission color into the emission here on the principle. And then on the emission strength, I need to set this back to 5 because 5 was the emission strength I wanted to use. And you can now see it looks exactly the same. But we are using the emission here instead of the procedural nodes. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you are using this setup instead with the mix shader and the emission shader, it works exactly the same. But I will just really quickly go over how to do this. So again, you want to press Shift A and you want to search for an image texture. And then you can click on New to create a new image texture and I can just rename this right here and then you can change the width and height to change the resolution and then you can click on OK and then right over here in the UV editor let's click right here and we're just gonna load up this texture so we can preview it and then again really important you want to set the emission strength to 1 because if it is higher or lower then the color isn't going to look correct and the values won't be correct 
So then right over here on the bake settings, you want to make sure you are using cycles. And then if you open up the sampling, I'm just going to use a sample count of one here on the render samples. And then if you open up the bake tab right here on the bake type, I want this to be set to emit. And then before we actually bake this, you want to make sure that the object is selected. You want to make sure that the texture is selected here. I'll press control S again to save and I can click on the bake button. And here it is, so you can see that it's finished. So then to save this image, you can click on image and then click on save as. And I'll just save this in the same folder on my computer. And then I am going to use a JPEG. You could also use PNG. I'm going to use JPEG with the quality at 100. And then I can click on save as. All right, so now that the emission map is baked, I don't need to use any of these procedural nodes anymore. So I can delete this color ramp here. I can delete the mix shader and I can also delete the emission. And then I can just plug the principled shader up to the surface of the material output. But I'm just going to bring these up so I have some more space. And then I'm going to bring this down here. And then this texture here, the color is going to go into the emission. And then I have the emission strength set to 5. So right here on the emission strength, I'm just going to set this to 5 so it is much brighter. And there we go. So it looks exactly the same. So that is it. That is how you bake emission maps in Blender. And if you'd like to learn more about texture baking in Blender, then you can check out my texture baking Blender tutorial playlist with the link in the description. And if you'd like to help support this channel, I will have links to my Gumroad and Patreon and the YouTube memberships. And I do appreciate your support. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.